Good morning, everyone. I'm meteorologist James Loff with Dynamic Weather Agency LSC, and today we're going to be talking about this, you know, system or disturbance moving through parts of the upper Midwest today into parts of the Great Lakes and Ohio Valley region, bringing some snowfall and some blizzard conditions along with that. But first, before I get into today's video, I do want to encourage you guys to hit that like button down below and subscribe to our channel, along with sharing this video with your friends and family so we can help make them weather aware. Also, be sure to check us out on social media where you can send us your weather-related photos and videos that we might share in our next and future upcoming videos. The links to our social media pages can be found down below in the description. You can also visit us online at dynamicweatheragency.com for more weather-related information and content. Uh, last but not least, be sure to check us out on our Patreon page to help support this channel so I can continue to make weather-related content like this and storm-chasing videos like you can see on our page along with some of the research we have here at Dynamic Weather Agency LLC. We have many different packages and tiers for you guys to choose from with again perks and exclusive content and early access to our Patreon subscribers. Again the link can be found down below in the description. Now getting into today's video, today we're going to be first talking about that forecast verification of that previous major winter storm system, that one that brought heavy snowfall to the Midwest and even to parts of the Northeast as that storm system became that impressive nor northeast uh, excuse me that impressive nor'easter type storm system that dumped significant snowfall across parts of the region we'll then go into our national weather service hazards those current winter weather watches warnings and advisories along with talking about our winter storm severity index then we'll be talking about this winter storm system along with our models and forecast accumulated snowfall Last but not least, we'll begin to talk about our polar vortex and some of this cold air that's going to be able to move on in, along with our threats for severe weather. Now, taking a look at our forecasted accumulated snowfall map for that previous major winter storm system, take a look at that swath of snow that we had depicted in that area, five to eight inches of snow from eastern Iowa into western uh Ohio as depicted on this uh, chart along with some of that lake effect enhancement we're expecting across Lake Michigan from um, northeastern uh, Illinois to northwestern Indiana with the isolated area of 8 to 12 inches of snowfall. As we take a look at what actually happened these are the forecasted accumulated snowfall uh, analysis out in now, as we take a look at what happened, this is the 48-hour forecasted uh, accumulated snowfall analysis. Again, this is taking a look at uh, snow reports and Coco Ross observers uh, across the region. Take a look at that area that we had depicted in that 8 to 12. Arlington Heights, Chicago, Gary, Indiana, Kanaki. You can see that area in that 8 to 12 inches of snow. Saw some of the isolated snowfall accumulations that we're expecting across that area with some lake enhancement. Now, it's hard to see that area of 5 to 8 inches of snow we had depicted out. Overall, we did rather well with depicting that area of 5 to inches of snow. You can see that it's kind of jagged a little bit uh, across parts of eastern Iowa into northern Illinois. The storm system kind of dipping a little bit more than what we were expecting. But again, overall, our forecast analysis was actually rather well with this major winter storm system. As we move into the northeast, this was our big player. This is where our most significant snowfall actually occurred. Take a look at this. Across parts of Virginia and West Virginia, we did have the area of 8 to 12 inches of snow. We should have dug that just a little bit further south, as you can see, with the 72-hour, uh, with the uh, snowfall analysis across that area, across, with some of that uh, snowfall that occurred in parts of the uh, higher elevations of the Appalachian Mountain region. I also wish on this chart we did extend our 8 to 12 uh, inches of snow further to the west across parts of New York, uh, pretty much encompassing most of New York, as you can see. Uh, with the Finger Lakes and Lake Ontario across that area, probably saw some lake effect, lake effect enhancement that allowed for some more significant snowfall across uh, the portion, this portion of New York where the Finger Lakes are. Now, as we take a look at the rest of the Northeast, take a look at Eastern PA, Northern uh, New Jersey, Southeastern New York, even into parts of West Virginia, excuse me, not West Virginia, but Massachusetts and Connecticut. That area of 12 to 16 inches plus of snow, we did rather well at depicting that area, even bringing that area of 8 to 12 inches of snow. We extended that through parts of Vermont, New Hampshire, and even the Maine, and we we're very happy with how our forecast actually um, went and how our forecast actually verified with this major winter storm system. 
Now getting into the current winter storm we're kind of tracking right now, taking a look at our current National Weather Service winter weather watches, warnings, and advisories. We do have some blizzard warnings. Those are those orange colors you can see in portions of Iowa, along with those winter storm warnings. Those are those pinks and those winter weather advisories are those purple colors that you are seeing across parts of the Midwest, Great Lakes, and Ohio Valley regions. We take a closer look. You can see those blizzard warnings for places like Des Moines, and even Fort Dodge, Mason City region, and Spencer. We do have those winter storm warnings for places like Cedar Rapids, Rockford, Green Bay, and even parts of the UP of Michigan. We also have those winter weather advisories for places like Omaha, Sioux City, Sioux Falls, Rochester, Madison, Milwaukee, Chicago, Kanakee, Fort Wayne, Kalamazoo, Grand Rapids, Detroit, Flint, Traverse City, all within those are winter weather advisories currently in effect. Now, as we take a look at our winter storm severity index, this index is taking a look at the snow amount, so the total snow accumulation and the rate in which snow is falling. It's also looking at the snow load. You know, do we have some light, fluffy snow, or do we have some very wet, heavy snow going through the region? It's also taking a look at some wind components, taking a look for blowing snow along with some visibility with ground blizzard. And then it's also going to take a look at a potential for some flash freeze. So the potential for surfaces to become ice covered along with the amount of ice accumulation. Taking a look at our day one, this is for today, winter storm severity index. You can see across parts of the Midwest, Great Lakes, Ohio Valley region, we do have some minor to moderate impacts across that region today. As we move into tomorrow, you can see much of those impacts are going to be isolated along Lake Superior, Lake Michigan, Lake Huron, with some lake effect snow that's expected to develop across these regions. So you can also see across parts of Lake Erie and Lake Ontario, some of those impacts right there with some lake effect enhancements too that are expected across parts of New York. Moving into day three, again, those impacts across Lake Erie, Lake Ontario, and parts of western New York. And then we got some impacts beginning to develop in parts of the Midwest and Central Plains with a clipper system that's going to be moving on through with some minor impacts with that. Again, those minor impacts roughly equate to those NWS advisory level criteria with minor disruptions to primarily those who are not prepared for these winter storm systems with minimal to no recovery time needed. Those moderate impacts roughly equate to those NWS warning level criteria with definite impacts to those with little preparation, perhaps a day or two of recovery time for the snow and ice accumulation to subside or for road crews to you know, keep up with some of that snowfall. Now, as we take a look at the National Weather Service's gridded forecast product, you can see their forecast for the next 72 hours. UP of Michigan, upper portions of Wisconsin, overall agreements along with the model agreements across that region for some significant snowfall. You can see the National Weather Service has put that nice area of 8 to 12 inches of snow, parts of western Michigan. You can also see that lake enhancement of those purples and pinks beginning to develop across Lake Erie and Lake Ontario. Some lake effect snow banning that we're expecting to develop across that area too. As we take a look at the European Ensemble, the Ensemble model is not picking up on that lake effect enhancement on Lake uh, Michigan and parts of western Michigan. Uh, this model is not really also again picking up on that lake effect snow across Lake Erie, Lake Ontario. It could be because the uh, course resolution of this model is not a fine resolution or high resolution model this European ensemble but again agreeance across the UP of Michigan as far as in northern Wisconsin is pretty well good you can see the probabilities for snowfall greater than three inches of snow very high across parts of the Great Lakes region Midwest you can see uh, across this area for parts of Wisconsin Michigan northern Illinois maybe even extreme parts in northern Indiana so take a look at the probability for snowfall over six inches. Again, confined to that UP of Michigan, northern Wisconsin, but you can see some slight um, areas depicted across parts of um, Michigan right here, the western portions of Michigan with some of that lake enhancement. We think this is just a little bit underdone on this European ensemble model. We do believe that 8 to 12 inches of snow is possible across that region. Now, as we take a look at our 72-hour accumulated snowfall forecast model, this is our in-house model. Taking a look at the uh, Great Lakes region, Midwest, even to parts of the Northeast, you can see 
how our model is doing. Take a look at some of the snowfall totals across the UP of Michigan, some of those purples and even light pinks across that area. You can see 16 to 20 inches of snow, some of those light pinks right here, you know, indicating up to two feet of snow. That was dark purples, 12 to 16 inches of snow. Take a look what our in-house model is depicting for some of that lake effect enhancement across eastern Lake Michigan into parts of western Michigan, Grand Rapids. You know, you can see areas of, you know, 12 to 16 inches of snow or even 8 to 12 inches of snow across this region that's a lot of snowfall that we could see you know with this major winter storm system moving on through again taking a look at parts of you know wisconsin even parts of eastern iowa we have that area of five to eight inches of snow we depicted across this area that only a couple of bottles were showing up on and again, some lake effect enhancement across parts of Lake Erie and even to Lake Ontario and the parts of western New York. As we take a look at our hand-drawn forecast accumulated snowfall map, again, the legend is right here up in the top right. We have this nice area of pink, of purple, this light purple, of area 5 to 8 inches to 12 in the green so far in-house model. And then we depicted this area of 8 to 12 inches across the UP of Michigan, again, across parts of the western portion of Michigan and eastern Lake Michigan expecting that lake enhancement there. We do have that area of 8 to 12 inches of snow uh, as depicted. Might end up adding the area of 12 to 16 inches of snow as depicted by our in-house model. As of right now, we are not having those high confidence with that, um, but that could be something that we could add in future updates. Again, we do have some enhanced snow across parts of Lake Erie, Lake Ontario. You can see some of that snowfall five to eight inches of snow expected across Lake Erie with some of that lake enhancement and Lake Ontario. We do have that area of eight to 12 inches of snow. Again, with this major winter storm, again, you can expect some accumulating snowfall that could cause some slippery roads. And with some of those lake effect snow squalls that we could see, again, that's going to cause some poor visibility. And with some of that heavy accumulating snowfall, we could see some travel disruptions. Now talking about our polar vortex and this blast of cold air that we could expect to see. Take a look at our Arctic Oscillation Ensemble forecast. Take a look at this dip in our Arctic Oscillation right here that we have um, going on. And with this dip of the Arctic Oscillation, it's going to weaken the polar vortex with the weakening of the upper level winds. And it's going to allow for the spilling of some of that cold air, cold Arctic air to spill into the United States. Now, taking a look at our future cast, you know, temperatures, take a look at some of that cold air that's going to be spilling in from parts of the upper northern plains into the Midwest, into the central plains, and even into parts of the northeast. You can see some of those cold temperatures approaching negative 20 to even negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit across this region. You can see just how cold some of these areas are going to be able to get with that disruption of our polar vortex with those weakening winds, again, allowing for some of that cold Arctic air to spill into the United States. Now, taking a look at our severe weather forecast for the severe weather for the next couple of days. Again, those quiet, stable conditions, those that cold air is going to be moving on in. So we're not expecting much for severe weather, especially over the next five days. Again, I would like to thank you guys for checking out to today's video. Be sure to hit that like button down below and subscribe to our channel if you have not already for more videos like this. And be sure to check us out on those social media links and our website, dynamicweatheragency.com. Again, those links are down below in the description. I am meteorologist James Long signing off for today. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video and you guys have a great and wonderful day.